Hello and welcome to Piano Shack with me, Woody. This is the YC61, the new stage keyboard from Yamaha. Absolutely my favourite category of keyboards, so I've been really keen to try this since it was released about a year ago. I didn't like that introduction very much. Let's try again, although the continuity is all a bit messed up now because it's here out of the box. As I was saying, this is a stage keyboard, so the focus is on the sounds that a gigging keyboard player would need, although it's a lovely piece to have in the studio as well. But the focus is on piano sounds, electromechanical, electric pianos like your Rhodes, Whirly, Clavinet, plus, of course, the Hammond B3 organ, which is fully modelled on this instrument. Now, you need to be a bit of a good player to get the best out of these because it doesn't have those one note jams like I normally play on the workstation and arranger keyboard. So I'm a little bit apprehensive about doing this thing justice. But let's see how we get on. I'll do my best. I'm not an organ player and it's a different kind of technique, but I do love the sound of the B3. I'm a bit rusty though, so yeah, let's give it our best shot. Let's go back in time then and I'll do a very rapid unboxing just to share the experience with you. And I'll tell you a little bit more about the instrument. Let's go back. I need to tell you that this is a review unit that Yamaha have loaned to me completely free of charge. And I do like this arrangement a lot because I'm considering purchasing this so I get the chance to try before I buy in the comfort of my own home. I get interesting gear to make videos about which hopefully my viewers will appreciate. And Yamaha of course get some promotion for their latest gear. So everybody wins really. First impressions right out of the box then. Well, this is certainly a really solid piece that feels very professional and high end. Yes, it feels like no corners have been cut in the construction or quality. I'll tell you more about that later when we take a tour of it. The keyboard feels really smooth and very nice to play even without even plugging it in. Yes, I'm liking what I feel here. Eddie is also fascinated by the drawbar LEDs, although he has no clue what they do. Don't worry, we'll put that right soon. It's an essential part of his educational curriculum. Eddie thinks it looks quite old fashioned and he may be onto something. The switch gear has a very retro feel, which is kind of cool and quirky. This keyboard came out about a year ago and I've been really keen to try it out. Did I tell you that this is my favourite category of keyboard with the Hammond, Rhodes and acoustic piano emulations on board? But this particular model has a lot more sounds than that and even an FM synthesizer engine. Yes, DX7 sounds are available. Oh, I love that! In this video, I thought I'd give you an introduction and overview of the YC. I'll give you a tour of the front panel controls. I'll share with you my first impressions and of course play you some musical demos so you can judge for yourself how good you think it sounds. Let me start by giving you my first impressions of the construction and overall quality of this. Well, it's absolutely outstanding, I'm happy to say. Yes, really exceptional, just like the Yamaha CP that we had in earlier. Completely metal chassis, top, bottom and sides, as far as I can tell. And uh, yeah, it's lovely with this solid enclosure, cool to the touch. And it really does enhance the enjoyment of playing it, at least for me. It makes a big difference having a well-constructed and solid feeling instrument under your fingertips. All the switch gear is kind of funky, just like on the CP with these little toggle switches to turn on and off the various sections. You have rotary encoders here. There are endless rotaries, but with the LED collars. 
So you can see what position you have dialed up and then you have these little toggles to go up and down through the various sounds and effects. These feel very nice as well. I thought uh, on my CP video I mentioned that I'd seen these kind of things before and someone told me that it was probably from the original Yamaha YC organs or in fact the CS80. I don't remember what that was now. And then you have these lovely chunky selectors here with an LED indicator as well. And then you've got an array of these on off toggle switches or switches that toggle between three different settings there, your key A, organ, key B. So that's pretty much the kind of controls we have here. Here is the main menu section here where you can save your presets and recall them and do various menu operations. But fortunately, you won't be needing to do that very often. Of course, you've got your draw bars here as well, which feel pretty wonderful. So yeah, overall, the construction here is absolutely top notch. I heard Blake from Yamaha saying on one of his streams that they have uh, teams of metallurgists. I think that's the word. Because Yamaha make, of course, acoustic instruments, real pianos, and also brass and woodwind instruments. And they used their department of metal experts to help constructing the case here. And you can really feel that as well. As for the feeling of the keys, well, Yamaha have done an excellent job here as well. This has to be the smoothest and quietest action I've ever played. It's really, really nice. The keys are easy to play towards the back of the keys as well, which is an important thing as well for me. Something I always pick up on when playing keys. They feel nice to play at the back as well as the front. These ones are really, really good in that regard. The keys are actually waterfall, so they have a 90 degree radius there going straight down, unlike synthesizer keys or piano keys that have a bit of a lip. And one thing I noticed right away that I'm also really impressed with is that Yamaha have, this is a custom designed keyboard specifically for this instrument, Yamaha have rounded off the corners of the keys, making them extremely comfortable when you're doing your glissando swipes, or in fact, when just playing chords in general. If you're playing like a B7, for example, your thumb is catching up on the corner of the keys. On this particular instrument, it's really comfortable. Again, if you're playing tenths, octaves or something, then your fingers are touching the corners of the neighboring keys. It's something I've noticed on many keyboards where you get just a little bit of a sharp edge on the keys, which makes this kind of stuff quite uncomfortable, but not so on this keyboard. Yamaha have done it right. Yeah, I'm really happy about that. And it's just another example of attention to detail, which is something I experience when using this entire instrument. So it might sound I'm gushing a little bit here and being a bit of a Yamaha fanboy. So I really did try to find some niggles and things I didn't like with the construction and the overall feel. The only things I could come up with really is that um, it might not be coming across on the camera. It probably looks better than it actually is, but it's quite hard to see at a glance, especially when you're unfamiliar with the instrument, where one section starts and the next finishes. These are all different sections here. And actually on the camera, it looks a little bit better, but in most lighting conditions, it's hard to see actually where one section ends and the other begins. So these knobs, for example, and buttons, you might be a little bit unsure if they're part of this section or that section, it would have been nice with some more higher contrasting sort of areas here marked on the front panel instead of these various shades of matte gray. Also, the other thing that could be improved, there are better screens available than this kind of backlit small LCD affair, but thankfully you won't be using it very much. So that's not really a big deal, but this isn't one of these high contrast OLED screens, just a traditional backlit LCD, but there is one killer feature that I was really happy to see here. Never seen it before on any other, any other keyboard. So uh, if I remember, I'll share that with you at the end of the video.
above the keys and not to the left of the keys, which I like because this makes it an extremely compact 61 note keyboard. No overhanging control panel to the left. We have our mod wheel up here and a pitch bend down here. And I'm once again so impressed with the attention to detail because these feel really superb. They're aluminium and extremely smooth to operate. And you can assign these to do various functions. This one, for example, you can assign to do Leslie speed to toggle it between fast and slow. Actually, the same thing for this one. You can set it to fast or slow. So lots of flexibility there. So this is the organ section, of course. We'll start on the left and work our way over. So master volume we have up there, of course. Here are the controls to make the Leslie go fast or slow. I've actually got it toggled to this knob as well. So you should be able to see the speed there ramping up. switch the Leslie simulator off for a second, a simulator off, which we do over here. You can see here are our amp and speaker models over in, here in this section. Toggle those off. We'll start, I guess, with these drawbar controls. Now, these are quite cool. You can configure the colour of these. And this is actually a setting per patch. So if you want all of your organ patches to have different colors, you can do it. But another nice thing is you can, I'm gonna to toggle here between the lower manual, a real Hammond organ has two sets of keyboards with two sets of drawbars. You can actually choose different colors for the lower and the upper. So at a glance, it's really easy to see which ones you're configuring. So yeah, this is the button over here that toggles between the two. We can also configure splits down there as well, and the keyboard range of the lower and upper manuals. So it's pretty comprehensive. We have pre-drive here as well. Which just adds a little bit of crunch to the pre-amplifier of the Hammond organ there. And yes, this is where you pull in and out the drawbars and the LEDs behind them indicate the settings that you have, it's, which is really nice because here I'm on the upper manual. You can see we've got all six pulled out of the first ones. But if I switch to the lower manual, then the drawbar, the physical drawbar positions no longer match to the actual sound, but the LEDs will show us exactly what we have. And this is also useful when you're switching between presets. So I hope you get the idea of that. It's a really nice, smart solution there that Yamaha have come up with. There's also a little translucent part so you can see through and see exactly on the LEDs which position you're at, although it's hard to see that from most angles. But yeah, nice, again, a little attention to detail. We do, of course, have a vibrato and chorus section exactly like we get on the real Hammond. I'm going to switch it on here with just the, uh, the chorus 3 C3 setting. sounds really full to me. I do like that and switch that off. We also have percussion. Third or second. I'm going to give a more detailed deep dive of the organ section in another video because there are some hidden parameters as well that are fun to tweak with. But an important thing here is we have three organ models, H1, H2, H3, and then some FM organs as well, which are used to do the Farfisa Vox and so on. Let's take a listen. If I switch on the vibrato, vibrato and chorus, it makes it easier to hear the differences. <laughs> We're still on the H1. There we go, H2. H2. 
H3. So this is a slightly um, older Hammond in less than perfect condition. This is a very clean, well-maintained jazz kind of Hammond organ. H3. Dial back the pre-drive. This one's probably more for your rockers. With more pronounced harmonics, this one has a... Also a different sort of harmonic response, frequency curve. And this one is the most full and warm. Then we have the... Various FM models as well. In the middle end, of course, if I can get a good angle, we have our screen there, which shows us the currently selected program and some information about which sounds we're using. And then we have the usual menu navigation button. This is a rotary thing here that you can turn and then click to select something. You can save your presets in a live set and then recall eight of them here at once with eight dedicated buttons. And then, of course, there are many different pages of live sets as well that we can step up and down using these ones here. Kind of looking at the screen of the phone instead of looking at the actual keyboard. It's easier if you look at the keyboard. So yeah, plenty of space for storing your own sounds. There are also some useful quick access functions here that you can see for yourself on the screen. We won't go through them now. over here we have quite a complicated section which is our keys and we have two different key sounds we can layer up together here keys A and keys B and then for each layer key A for example we can have two different insert effects and those are dialed up right here so pretty comprehensive stuff here you can do an awful lot with this particular sound engine section this is where you toggle on and off key A or key B and if you have both key A and key B switched on at the same time then you'll need to use this little button here to tell the instrument which of the key slots you're currently editing on the front panel. So basically you just select your sound here the categories you do using this knob and then step up and down them using this one here. Okay a bit hard to do with one hand right now but that's the general gist of it and then you can toggle on and off the two available effect slots here and then for each effect you can call up let's get the angle right there you can call up the various effects you've got things like choruses flanges distortions and then some more bizarre effects as well but two of them per key a and two of them per key b so that's pretty pretty flexible there and then for each effect you have a depth and a rate control. There's also an extra filter or envelope control here that I haven't even found myself using just yet. As we know by now then, the focus of this is the Hammond organ, electric pianos and acoustic pianos as well, but it does have some other tricks up its sleeve. Lots of them in fact. Here's a little musical montage of the FM synthesis sounds and some other acoustic samples.
So you can have three different sounds playing at the same time, the organ, key A, key B. This is where you set up if you want splits or layers of key A, key B. And I've done some quite complicated configurations here with all three sound engines activated. And I've been able to dial up exactly the right configuration of splits and layers that I want fairly easily. So that's actually quite a powerful feature as well. Okay, let's continue with our quick tour here then, which is actually not so quick, but let's go over to the next section, which is another set of insert effects. I'm sorry if I'm not playing very much as I do these demonstrations, but I've only got one hand free, the other hand's on the camera, one hand to operate the controls and play at the same time. But I will do in the future some deep dive demos of the effects, the keys section and the organ section where I'll set up a top-down camera so I can play, talk and operate the controls at the same time. But just see this as a quick overview, introduction to this keyboard to get us started today. As if it wasn't enough with the two effects we have per key sound, we can also enable an additional insert effect, which has similar effects to what we have over here. But there are some additional ones as well, even like a looper delay, which will be interesting to play around with. And you can toggle through these to select which of the sound zones, the sound layers you want to affect. And we have, of course, depth rate controls here, again, with these nice visual LEDs to show you what the setting is. This kind of thing is useful as well when you call up a preset, because you can instantly see what the value it is set to. Tap tempo there, and this is where we toggle it on and off. Very nice. <laughs> Over here is our amp speaker simulation section. Toggle that on like so. Very satisfying to operate these buttons indeed. And here you can see, or you can choose which of the sections you want to affect. You can only affect one at a time over here actually. So choose which one you want the effect to be applied to. The organ, for example, here is where you'll enable your rotary A, which is a sort of tube driven Leslie speaker, rotary speaker, or rotary B, which is more transistor, gives you a lot more drive, better for the rockers, that one. And then you can step through various amp simulations. We have a lead, it says in the manual what these are, some British amplifier. We've got things like a crunch. This one perhaps is a Fender Twin or something like that. It's called double, and then case, which is our Rhodes suitcase emulation. And all of these have a drive control and a sweepable tone control as well. So if we just take this road sound, wow, plenty of drive there. Let's go to the suitcase model. This is quite nice to mellow it out a little bit. Okay, we are almost there. Sorry if the keyboard is looking a little bit dusty under the light and the close-up camera here. I did attempt to clean it. One of the disadvantages with a keyboard like this that's full of knobs, sliders, buttons and switches is that it's pretty difficult to get in between and clean it off. Although I did attempt to do that, but uh, it is what it is. But the final but one section here that we can toggle on and off is a global reverb. You can adjust the send amount 
If you want to adjust all three at the same time, you can do that there, and this is your depth control. There is no particular other configurations to change here. I would have liked to see a slightly smaller reverb than the one that's available here, because it's actually quite massive. A bit too much so for your typical piano roads and organ sounds. So you actually end up dialing stuff in, as you can see on the screen, levels pretty much about somewhere between one and 10, and that's still a little bit too much. So that's another niggle I have here. This particular reverb isn't all that useful at the whole range, which goes all the way up to 127. Finally then, we have Master EQ, which strangely is a bit inconsistent because we don't get one of these lovely little toggle switches. We just get a button. But anyway, we have a low, well, there's our low there, low high knob, there's a little detent in the middle, there's the high, and a sweepable mid boost or cut. I almost forgot, but let me give you a very quick tour of the back panel. We have a lovely chunky on off switch here, internal power supply with a thick sturdy kettle lead. Excellent stuff. This is where you can connect up a USB stick if you want to transfer or back up your sounds. Firmware updates, that kind of thing. This is for connectivity to a PC, for transmitting and receiving MIDI data and audio data. This has a built-in audio audio interface, stereo up, stereo down, which is perfectly adequate for this type of instrument. Continuing over to the right hand side, MIDI in and out. Then we have various foot switch inputs, sustain, assignable. Here are two more for expression pedal. And I actually have a nice expression pedal connected up here that I use for swells. The swell is a very important effect of the Hammond organ. That's the foot pedal that controls the volume, but also controls the timbre a little bit of the organ. Very useful expressive control since organ doesn't have velocity sensitive keys. Moving on then, we have a nice chunky left and right input here if you want to connect another keyboard to this and then mix it through here. And we also have stereo output and phones. And just look again, attention to detail. These are solid connectors screwed into this metal backplate, so these are not going to let you down. And yes, I did promise to show you my favourite unexpected feature, so here it is. So if we go into the menus here, I've gone into the control panel, the light options, we can go to the LCD switch, click there, turn it off, check this out. The screen switches off. I think this is really awesome. No longer do I have to have an LCD screen and it's back like glaring at me whilst I'm performing. On a keyboard like this, once you've dialed in your configurations and set up your sounds, you really don't need the screen. I have a bank of eight sounds in my live set. I know what they all are. I can remember. I don't need to see that information on the screen. I certainly don't need to see anything else on the screen whilst I'm playing Hammond organ and Rhodes. The originals never had LCD screens after all, did they? Of course, if you press the menu button, it wakes back up to life and then switches back off again. Also, when you do some parameter changes, it also just pops up to life, wakes up just for a little split second to show you what you've adjusted. I think that's really cool and I'd love to see that on more keyboards in the future. That's it for today then. I hope you enjoyed this little, well, not so little introduction and overview to the YC. More videos to follow where we go in depth on the organ the piano and effects sections. This is primarily intended to be a keyboard for gigging musicians playing live. Now we're not doing so much of that right now, but I do have a collaboration ongoing with some amazing musicians where I'll really put the YC and my own skills to the test. I've also invited some of Sweden's finest Hammond organ players to come over and try this out and share their opinions on just how authentic it is compared to the real thing. And of course, the elephant in the room. This is, of course, going up against the red keyboard, and I'd love to try it out myself against the Nord Electro. So I'm looking to buy one, or perhaps if there's any viewers in the area of Stockholm that want to collaborate with me on this, then please do get in touch. Anyway, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Cheerio. Cheerio.